All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Before we get into the main discussion of the day, whether the country is heading in the right direction or the wrong direction, keep your views coming at Trevor and Bidia at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. But let's wind up on this conversation around the doctor's strike. And Mayak, I'll give you a chance to respond to what Arnold said and Okango as well so that we move and switch topics. Yeah, thank you, Trevor. I just wanted to respond to this because uh, just listening to Arnold, he just reminds me of the rest of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration of this habit of speaking from both sides of the mouth. Because Arnold here is telling us that doctors are carrying disrespectful placards. But he's saying Okango here is uh, talking like a kindergarten guy. So he's also using disrespectful language <laughs> to address uh, people in the, same, in the same respect. But I just wanted to speak to what I actually said in terms of doctors having a grandstand. And I still stand by my words. And the reason why I said that is because, again, of the government speaking from both sides of the mouth. You cannot be the people who are telling uh, doctors, please step down, uh, accept this less amount. And yet, you're still the people who are not, who are having extravagant, extravagance in, in government. You're still the people who are telling us that you are increasing the amount of money. In, and I still have an issue with that. The amount of money in status, because now you want to buy tea for people when they come for meetings. You cannot... If, if, you, if you want us to believe that you're genuine about cutting down on, 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 on costs and uh, 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 telling doctors to also cut down, you must demonstrate that you're doing the same. And that's all I'll say. Okay. Yeah. Okan. Arnold says that uh, some of the arguments I'm advancing, those lines are from kindergarten. And I want to tell an Arnold, take time and interact with the kindergarten kids. They're the most honest and truthful because they'll tell you as it is. That's what we are telling them. But lastly, Arnold enjoys actually a very huge medical cover. You know, Arnold is a ranking member of UDA. <laughs> and therefore, he enjoys a huge medical cover. He can actually present himself even when he sneezes. He sneezes, he will present himself to Nairobi Hospital, private, and he'll be admitted for no reason and enjoys the cover. But what of the people of Kenya who are in Madira, who are in Gorogocho, who are in Madare, who have nothing? Arnold, those are the people we are talking about. Those are the people we are defending. Those are the people that would want your government to address their issues of concern. He says that um, uh, Irene Mayaka should not appear helpless and he has an opportunity in the Senate, Parliament for that matter. Is Arnold aware that in the recent polls that we'll just delve into shortly, has ranked Senate as one of the most performing institutions at 69%, above the government 52%. We, the people from the government, uh, from, from, from the opposition, is he aware that the poll has ranked us above the government in terms of performance and addressing the issue of concern at 65? I think, Arnold, we are doing very well, and what you have to do Climb down, okay. please, and all. Climb down. <laughs> okay. Don't go okay. Trevor, uh, allow me to actually probably <laughs> bring this to a close. First yeah. of all, by saying that uh, uh, truth is, government has actually made <clears throat> offers. Yes, you mentioned that earlier. I need, and I want to ask of doctors to actually think about the patients, and to also know that wars are not won in a single battle. I hear them, we feel them, but I want to ask them that. This CBA will actually eventually be realized. <clears throat> but they are learned people, probably the sharpest tools in our toolbox as a country. If they were to look at our budget documents, if they were to look at the financial status of the country without necessarily being emotional about it, these are people of facts. These are people of science. They cannot <coughs> get into witchcraft like the one Okango is trying to pull here when he mentioned some of those <laughs> things he's doing. These are doctors, proper guys. Yes, These are science like guys. <laughs> so, so what do they do? I, I would ask them to actually make a counter offer, put up a framework of engagement. At the end of the day, the patient here, and uh, Trevor, you will realize that some of these offers actually, the, the, the strike generally is actually quite unfair. Uh, for example, uh, the Council of Governors is a ghost employer. When it comes to engaging with this particular issue, it's just a consultative framework, an engagement framework. There are counties that have made progress in some of these particular issues, but they're still suffering. <laughs> that is just how bad it is, that there are counties, for example. Yeah. Doctors are employers of different units, some at national level, yeah. others at county level. There are some counties that have actually complied with a little bit of these particular demands. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
but they are suffering like all those other counties where governors are uh, behaving badly. Okay. So, can we have a, beyond these uh, scoring of points around <coughs> arguments? Can we stop winning arguments and scoring points with the cost of people, the okay. human life? Okay. Can we, for example, have a, a, a little bit? I know for government, if doctors just showed even a little bit of goodwill, I can tell you that 24-hour thing is put there because honestly, we've climbed down, we are standing down, but what doctors are doing is that they're standing on a story uh, horse, not even just a normal one a very high horse, and Kinaokango and others are helping and enabling it. So the truth is that <coughs> let there be a demonstration of leadership okay. from both the doctor's side and on this particular end from government, which government has actually done. Okay. The truth is that we've really tried. So rather than have a stalemate, yeah. go for 100 days, <laughs> we really are drawing our country behind. Okay. So for, uh, Okango spoke about uh, personally about the everything I do, uh, uh, that is neither here nor there. We're talking about people of Kenya. Okay. I, I want to forgive him because he's still in the streets. <laughs> you, you don't exactly deny that you have a good medical. Yeah, he can't deny. Yes, yes. Let's talk about something else here, Gary. Yes, 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 yes. Now, and let's take an opinion poll even right here where we are. Is the country heading in the right direction or the wrong direction? Definitely, FY. definitely, it's headed in the right direction. Right direction. Yes. Okay. Why? Um, I've seen info. Info truck have given. Um, um, a grading of C, which uh, to most of us is satisfactory, but I feel like that is below what should have been graded, and I, I feel like part of it has been has been um, because of the ongoing uh, strike. This was done before this. And end of March. Yeah. December. It was done before the strike. This it, it was, was done, done in December. By end of March. No, no. It was done in December. It was December. just released yesterday, but mm -hmm. it was done in December before the strike. <coughs> okay. So, so, so that and also fifty eight percent of the country mm -hmm. says we are heading in the wrong direction. It was slightly then, above high. It's, it's, even it's, as you it's, it's you. Geru's chance. We'll I wanted to ask you a question. Let, let, let Geru answer his part. <laughs> yes. Well well um if if you look at um some of the objectives that the Kenya Kwanza uh, administration had when it was coming into power and that includes um, um, reducing the cost of living um, ending um, hunger which is in line with the sustainable development goals um, uh, increasing tax uh, taxation so that we can be a sustainable uh, country and of course we we were faced with a lot of challenges including the the, the, the high the high uh, debt that we, we we had and most of these were, were to be implemented through the five core pillars that is uh, agriculture um, MSMEs um, uh, digital superhighway the housing the housing and settlement uh, program and uh, finally uh, health which uh, we have just uh, discussed and if you look at some of the um, strategies that have been taken into account when implementing all of that. I feel like we're in the right trajectory because you see like 85% of, of our, our, our employment comes from the MSME uh, sector. If you look at some, some of the strategies that, that have been put in place to you know, uh, uh, reduce unemployment levels in Kenya, yeah. Um, of course, we have the uh, housing program, which is offering more than 120,000 jobs. Yeah. Uh, we, of course, we have the um, external external jobs that we 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 have offered Kenyans. Yeah. The four bilateral agreements that we have signed with different nations out there, and if you look at the cost of living over time, mm -hmm. if you look at the inflation um, between June. June 2022 and July 2023, it was uh, at an average of 8.7, and it peaked at 9.6 in October. And when you look at where we are right, right now, we are at 5.7 percent, which means that uh, most of the basic commodities yeah. uh, that are used by the local monanchi have reduced. If you look at the prices of unga, which initially was being subsidized, uh, when the government was coming into into uh, the administration was coming into power. <coughs> we used to purchase unga at around 250 shillings. Mm. Right down in the in the shelves, it's around 119 shillings. And sometimes when we are talking about cost of living, we have to be very contextual to that person 
uh, at the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah, because and usually the high cost of living is the biggest concern by the people. Of course. And and when when you are talking about uh, prices of local commodities, yeah. we, we, we have... When you go to Kibera, you don't expect like everyone is purchasing uh, everything in the supermarkets. We are looking at uh, very basic things, okay. like what is the prices of what are the prices of uh, uh, um, one kilogram of maize meal? Okay. We call it gorogoro. Mm -hmm. goro, mo goro, goro moja ni how much? Which is around 80, mm -hmm. 80, 90 shillings. Okay. So I feel like the government is in the right trajectory yeah. based on the opportunities that are also being given to. Um, the, the young people out there okay. through uh, the, the ICT hubs that have been launched by the government yeah. and also agriculture being the backbone of, of our economy, right. subsidizing production yeah. so that the cost of living yeah. may go down. You're right, by the, the, the info track poll was done between 8th and 10th of March, but yes. the doctor's strike started on the 13th, on the 12th actually of March. But let me bring in, that's yes. one, one out of four saying the government is heading in the right direction. Uh, Maliba, I think we know your answer, but is we heading in the right direction <laughs> or the wrong direction? <laughs> Trevor, when you say that you think... We, we know your answer. It's you and who? On whose behalf are you speaking? <laughs> Depending on where you are All from. Right. So would I then be justified? What so let me you predict it. Say, you say yes. <laughs> when, you use, when you use we, should I be justified to bunch you together together with Okango and I did? So no, that then when no, I deal no, with you, I deal no, with you as no, one. No, no. Now, now you're heading in the wrong direction. <laughs> Because you, you see, again, I see they did a strategy here, the Napoleonic strategy, that if you're faced by two forces, fighting forces, you sit in between them and then beat them in turns. So they attempted that, but then... No, I don't no, think no, no. I mean, they yeah, yeah. but it's okay. So be, be that as it may, I, first of all, well, was wondering why anyone would do a poll in December. No, it was then between the 8th and 10th of March. Yeah, that, yeah. finally, I think uh, that, that takes care of it. Yeah, 8th and 10th of March. Uh, largely, I think uh, polls are quite subjective. Uh, the subjectivity of polls is no longer something <coughs> that is, is no longer conjecture. It's out there. So uh, I've not looked at the methodology, the questions, and the context in which actually that was actually <coughs> done uh, before this can actually go out. But then there are indicators to actually show that the country is actually going in better, uh, in a better direction. <coughs> uh, first of all, I will use a very basic tool, a comparison tool. Last year, at a time like this, and today, it was difficult to get Unga below 170 at a time like this last year. Today, that is not the case. The dollar was running riot on us. We have actually managed that. The cost of cooking fat was up, up there. That has since gone down. We still have got things that have actually not been worked on, specifically fuel. It's not where we really want it to be. But the truth is that we are not where we yeah. were. We've got a few challenges, like now having the doctor strike in place, the medics now, of course, it's quite complex because you've got the clinicians, there are the lab technicians also out there. There's also <coughs> the other, uh, the technicians are also not, the technologists, I mean, uh, the other part that we really don't talk to them about them so much. And I really want to thank the nurses because somehow uh, the doctors have actually ensured that they can lobby all the medical fraternity to go to the streets when they have got issues. But immediately they extract their pound of flesh, they leave everybody else. And I think nurses, would rather do that way and get things done differently. So I do not agree with the poll because I know for sure that sometimes if you torture data sufficiently and you beat it so hard, it can confess to anything you want. And this is what is actually coming out of it. I have seen Okango actually running with the poll. And I know Okango comes from that group that worships polls. They worship at the shrine of pollsters. <laughs> And that is why, for example, our numbers will be the easiest of things to run with them. Like we, the opposition, are doing very well. And he talks about the Senate. You know, he's at a place where he's actually disaggregating the Senate and says the Senate is performing better than the government. And I would want to ask, is the Senate an NGO? So, first of so all, I, I wanted him, first of all, to qualify when he, what he calls government. So let's, let's start with the, a few basics here. Yeah. So you don't agree with this poll? Yes. <laughs> it is this same poll that says 58% of Kenyans believe the country is headed in the wrong direction compared to 71% in July 2023. Yeah. Therefore, according to this poll, there's an improvement. Mm. You still don't agree with it? I still do not agree with it because last month... So there's month, no improvement according to you? As in, well, well, they're being minimalist. This is a minimizing approach. And by the way, there's something called the bandwagon effect that... Uh, of what relevance, for example, was the poll? What were the objectives? Who funded it? There's no free lunch anywhere. 
So th this poll definitely has got something to eat. So if but, someone but, is funding <laughs> it, then it means it has to be the person that is no, being praised here. We, because this uh, poll is I'll tell you this from, from the Kenya Kwanza from, from, from the Kenya, Kenya Kwanza perspective, perspective. What is the headline? If you are to read fifty eight percent says they're heading in the wrong direction. Those, those are the majority. But last year seventy one percent said yet they were heading in the wrong say, direction. Paul says so that means more the most popular political right party, direction. for example, is UDA, right? Mm -hmm. The most popular national leader is William Ruto. But somehow a majority <laughs> of Kenyans are saying that the country <laughs> is going in the wrong direction. I do not agree with that, Paul, because that is a very good... Uh, <clears throat> I will swallow that one. 58%. <laughs> I still do not believe okay. so. All right, oh, okay. It's right, much right. better uh, than that. Okay, so you want it to be Trevor. much better. Right direction or wrong direction? If Okano. there are people... Yeah who ought to have disagreed with this poll. It is us from the position. Because the poll actually suggests that um, in the last polls that they have done on the same issues, December, I mean, September 20, 23. 23, all the way to uh, March 2024, the issues of concern are more or less constant, and they have been Improvement, uh, improvement. direction of the country. However, we are saying that is not enough. We would, have, we would have actually disagreed. But we are saying this poll could be a true reflection of the state of the nation. The state of the nation is the state of the people. They have said that from that time, the major issue of concern has been high cost of living. Arnold has acknowledged that uh, the high cost of living Going by fuel, it is not where we should have it, but there have been improvement. I agree, because the fuel is not costing what it used to cost previously, today. But look, it is still high for the majority. He has also said that, is this Senate an NGO? It is not. It's, government. it's part of government. Yes. However, when you look at what the poll was trying to uh, address, direction of the country, Majority, more than half of the people living in this country, particularly those who are polled, are saying we are headed the wrong direction, 58%. When you look at key issues of concern, they have listed, they are saying high cost of living, unemployment. He talked of digital hubs. It means it is not having any impact. High taxes, corruption, and many other. Access to healthcare is top 10 of issues. And remember, this was done even before the doctor struck. So it means our healthcare system, there's still a problem. Notwithstanding the, 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 whatever, the, the, the strike. But now, here's the issue. We know that the presidency has been trying to do something. That's something that I'm trying to do that other polls make William Ruto as one of the top leaders has not impacted enough, good enough, to the lives of Kenyans. We live in this country, me, Mayaka, and team, we live here. And we don't want this country to go down. It is not in our interest, Arnold, to see the government of President Ruto go down. It is in our interest to see it go up and succeed. And that's why we must speak the truth. The truth has been reflected by the people of Kenya in the poll. Arnold can discredit this poll, but the truth is, this poll actually gives three fundamentals. Number one, it has addressed where the country is going. There is improvement, but it is not the right direction that we ought to have taken. It means we must improve. The key concerns that actually if I were UDA strategist like Arnold, I would actually pick the top 10 issues and go and sit down with President William Ruto at on Gong Road uh, UDA house and tell him, Mr. President, the people are saying that you have to now focus, instead of traveling a lot, focus on cost of living. They are saying the young people don't have jobs. You promised the jobs. Please, Mr. President, let's address it. Mr. President, the taxes are so high. The people are saying, please, let's now lower down the taxes and ensure that we improve the economy. If our UD again, I would take, I would run with this poll to Mr. President, as much as you don't like it, and say, Mr. President, we have a document here that we feel can help us. But look, I'm not the advisor of UDA. I'm their critic, so I'll criticize them, but constructively. My constructive criticism is, for sure, we have seen the rents. They told us that there was, they were going to subsidize production, not consumption. We left that discussion. 
and we allow them to do what they are doing. Look, today we cannot differentiate between substandard fertilizer and fake. The CS agriculture, he told us that one of their key pillars is agriculture. One of the pillars that has been badly hit is agriculture, where the farmers have actually received a substandard fertilizer on the admission by the CS himself. Yesterday he was here, he said that. How do you expect the people of Kenya to agree with you that you are doing the right thing, you are in the right direction, while the, subs, while the, uh, uh, whatever, the agriculture input, farm input that you promised them to subsidize is already fake or substandard? By the way, uh, Nani, uh, Trevor, there's no difference between substandard and fake. Because substandard goods are goods that do not meet quality. They, are, they, they, are, as a, they have manufacturer's defect, yeah. and therefore they are fake. So for us, where we sit, this poll actually reflects on the state of the nation. Okay. And the state of the nation is that things can be better. I have to give it to them. Things can be better, but they are not better. So what we are saying, we would want to see Arnold and Tim take it positively okay. and say, actually, we are progressing. But Kenyans are not satisfied. What do we do? Sit down with your leadership. You have a manifesto, the bottom-up economic plan. Look at these nine, ten issues that the poll highlights. These are the people that voted for you. They have told you, Arnold, you are doing badly. Improve. Don't discredit their voices. Mama Mboga has spoken. Boda Boda, Mkokoteni. Why are you insulting them, Arnold? Tell them that we can do better, Arnold. Okay. Because I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> right direction or wrong direction? Uh, uh, totally wrong direction. But uh, then again, um, and I am a consumer of, of, of <clears throat> polls because they give you an indication of where you're going. And if you look at the trajectory between the, the last three quarters, they're actually improving. Yeah, as a government. Mm. And I just want yeah. to say this from the onset. If I was the president, I would want advisors who actually tell me the truth about what polls say. Not people like Arnold who are telling me dismiss polls. Because <laughs> even when they were campaigning and uh, looking for their appropriate candidates and all that, they still used polls. So you cannot ignore the polls. But having said that, first of all, I just want to, to say to, to Kenyans, based on the polls and especially on... Um, what they said about uh, uh, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga going to the AU, um, that I, we actually appreciate um, the information. <coughs> and if you look at the age gaps of the people who gave the highest um, uh, endorsements for him, it's actually the young people. So the young people of this country believe that um, Raila Odinga is a, is a, is a pan-Africanist, -Afri he's um, revolutionary, and he's been very consistent um, in his uh, stand in, in terms of what he believes in. But uh, uh, Trevor, I just want to go into the nitty gritties of the, of the polls. And I'm just looking at some of the issues that Kenyans have raised, which are very fundamental issues. Uh, yes, cost of living um, is moving in the, in the right direction, but it's not good enough. Because again, we cannot be a people that are, are okay with things just being average. That's not who we are. That's not Kenya. Kenya should be at a state where we are actually <laughs> acknowledging when things are done uh, above par. Secondly, yes, and I've had um, lots of people, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa administration, um, saying that the dollar has gone down. But then again, uh, Trevor, we are forgetting that our Kenya shilling is actually um, not gaining any track against other local uh, currencies. Tanzania is gaining on us. Zambia is gaining on us. Uh, <laughs> the not true. That's not factual. No, they are. They are. No, that's if, not factual. If you look at it from 10 years ago, we can prove we'll now. You'll argue with the numbers. You, yes, yes, with the numbers. Yes, but me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at between now and 10 years ago. If you look at the Kenya shilling versus the, the dirham now and 10 years ago, it's actually not gaining. Yeah. So we cannot only compare the Kenya shilling to the dollar. We also need to compare it to other uh, other currencies out there, including the Singaporean dollar, because the Singaporean dollar is one of the best performing uh, in, in the world. So we, we, we've got to look at the whole uh, purview when we are when, when you're looking at, uh, at, at, at foreign exchange. Trevor, when you're looking at some of the issues that are going on in this country, uh, we have extremely high taxes as a country. And yet there's no improvement in terms of the infrastructure of the country. We are having road carnage has started going up again. Insecurity issues in some of our, of our counties. Fertilizers, and yesterday I was very mesmerized that 
uh, how we are measuring fertilizers in this country is by smelling. While there are countries in this, in this, in this world that actually are using <laughs> drone technology to determine whether or not the fertilizer that, we ha that they have is sufficient for the soils. We are smelling fertilizer in this day and age in Kenya. And you want to say that the government is doing well? I don't think so. So, Trevor, if I were the government, I would take this poll line by line and go through the issues that Kenyans are actually telling you because you're losing touch yeah. with the Kenyan population. If okay. you think you're doing so well and yet the Kenyans are telling you the opposite. Okay. Come 2027, Kenyans will shock you. Okay. Ngeru, what is wrong with this poll? Because it clearly indicates here that there is an improvement. Mm -hmm. Last time, the government was rated at a D. Mm -hmm. Now it is at a C. Mm -hmm. So there is an improvement, yeah, except sure. it's not enough. Mm -hmm. What is your concern with this poll? Uh, first of all, let me. Uh, Okango has said that we need to do better, and uh, for sure we're doing better. <laughs> Bottom-up economic transformational uh, <laughs> agenda. Yeah. But uh, I, I, like I've just said uh, before, I, I, I feel like, like just like Maliba said, we have to also look at uh, who is sponsoring these polls, because uh, if you look at the trajectory, based on uh, the data that I've shared we are definitely on the right direction. <clears throat> if we look at some of the opportunities that the government is creating in the employment sector, it is beyond sat satisfactory. If you look at some, some of the proceeds that have come from, from um, us subsidizing production, they are beyond satisfactory. And uh, for, when, when you delve into, into the issue of uh, uh, fertil fertilizer, I think, I think um, it has been very clear, and the president was very clear about it, that anyone who has, who has, uh, taken, who has, taken, who, who has uh, participated in doing all that, um, I don't want to use, use an in, inappropriate word, they should take full responsibility. And the government was also very clear that all, all the farmers who received the fertilizer that was substandard from what the CS shared yesterday. They are going to get uh, their full com compensation. And uh, everyone has to take responsibility for everything that they have done to put us where we are currently. And um, we, we, we have also spoken about uh, the, the dollar. Of course, it has been improving over time. And contrary to what Moshimio has said, uh, the Kenya shilling is one of the best performing in the global uh, stock exchange uh, market, and which also shows that there is a lot of investor confidence in, in Kenya. So I, I feel like we are in the right uh, trajectory in, in terms of that. Okay. Yes. Let's just take the first five issues. Yes. Are these issues of concern? Mm -hmm. High cost of living, mm -hmm. unemployment, mm -hmm. high taxes, corruption, <coughs> access to health care. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are they above average for you? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Cause, cause, to cause, cause, is it cause, above average now? Because definitely, if we, if you look at the cost of living, based on the data that, that I've shared, we are in a, in a better place compared to last year. When you look at the, the opportunities that, that have been created in the employment <coughs> industry, we are in a better place. I've shared about the opportunities that have been shared in the, uh, that have been created in the housing sector. And um, uh, the other one was... The other one was mm -hmm. high taxes and unemployment. By high the taxes. Way, you know, KNBS mm -hmm. statistics says that most employers are saying that they're going to let go of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Before that, FKE had said more companies were letting go of employees, more than about 150,000 of mm -hmm. them. How do you say that unemployment is not an issue? Uh, I, I saw the survey that was carried out. Um, uh, more than 200 uh, CEOs yes. were saying that they were... But we should also look at some of the factors that they were... Uh, trying to uh, put 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 forward yeah. in, in regards to that, and um, yeah, f for sure. Uh, when you look at um, when you look at um, 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 where, where where the technology is also taking us, mm -hmm. as much as a lot of people are being uh, rendered uh, jobless by AI, yeah. it's this, just the same way that a lot of opportunities are also being being created. Okay. So I, I think I, I would say that it's a it's a two way uh, traffic, but in terms of what the government is doing to create more opportunities, 
I feel like we are on the right trajectory. Okay. So, yeah. Arnold, let's talk about this issue of just unemployment at 41%. Is this an issue of concern? Actually, the numbers were 70,000. So, the FKE said 70,000 Kenyans have lost their jobs in the last one year. Federation said preliminary survey shows that 70,000 are losing their jobs because of the current situation. <coughs> more than 50% of CEOs here are saying more than 20% of Kenyan CEOs are saying there's a prediction of job cuts going forward because of the tough business environment. Do you still think this unemployment that is ranked at 41% is an exaggeration? The issue of unemployment is a little bit complex because since 1992, the informal sector became the biggest job creator. And mm. the word informal already talks about the grey economy. It means data is not normally very much available, freely available as it will be. I do not have a quarrel with the prediction as done then. Uh, they thought that the situation would persist. That situation has not remained the same. So predictory numbers cannot be, then be uh, flashed around as a concrete data that you can actually run with. But is it an At the time when the, the CEOs were <laughs> raising issues, you remember when there was a FKEU raising that issue, what was the issue in contention? They were talking about the taxes at that particular point. They were raising issues to do with how the economy was performing. But Trevor, let us say this. The truth is that there has been a stabilization of the macro. <laughs> At the macro level, we've really worked hard to do a stabilization, and that is why we are where we are today. But is it enough? At the micro level, it's still, we are still working there. Uh, Trevor, you would know that uh, we have got uh, budget cycles, and an economy is not a product of miracles. It's not a click. It's not a fast food thing. It's cooked and it's worked around. So with, within this particular budget cycle, we've actually been able to balance out this. We've stabilized the macro. Now we are looking forward to the next uh, budget cycle to ensure that uh, we get to move on. But allow me to actually just say this, Trevor. That the reason why I do not agree entirely with this particular poll is that uh, it's, mi it's, it's been uh, minimizing uh, the work that has been done. But I'll tell you this. The kind of heavy lifting that has been done by this administration, I can only equate it to this. That they, in, in John 9, 23 and 24, uh, that is uh, the Gospel of John, in chapter 9, <laughs> verse 23 and 24, there, there's, this, there's, this, uh, <laughs> there's this blind man who was made to see by Jesus. And when the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the order from which Okango actually rises, uh, came <laughs> criticizing oh and God. saying, did he really make you whole? The parents of this blind man, <laughs> the former blind man, came and said, he is of age, ask him. And the man said this, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know is that I was once blind and now I can see. What am I saying? I am saying that this economy was in a coma. It has been resuscitated, it's being nursed, and it's taking off. This data is so much a Pharisee, it's a ranting of the Pharisees. It is politicization of data for purposes of trying to make a point and whatever objective they have. But the truth is that the kind of heavy lifting that has been done for us to avoid that debt situation that everybody was actually expecting us to go the Greek way and everything else. You can become a philosopher and a motivational speaker on that particular end. That is the business of politics. But this is it. That the work done, you cannot say that only 42% of Kenyans approve it. It's slowly seeping in. It's actually, I would, I would actually have agreed with them if it's 50-50. But then at 58%, 8% is <coughs> far too much. Then Okango spoke about uh, the president running around with the polls because just polls have come in. They believed in polls, and that is why, as Mio, even when they had better opportunity to win, they ran with the polls, posing on loans in Kajiado, uh, campaigning by way of fear and photography. So that when you just show up on a loan, people stand up and they sell fear. <laughs> that way, you know, Paul's about perception. This business of selling perception does not work. You see that the president should just pick this poll and run with it. The president has got intelligence, real-time intelligence. He, doesn't, he no longer doesn't need polls 100%. You know why? Because the president has got better advisors. Who has, number one, he has got resources to get advisors the best you could, the best money can actually afford. Yeah. Because who then has got the power and the need for that other than him? This is why so, Oka Okango question. is running. Is there an it's, issue with the unemployment? So let's not do the, let's no, I, that absolute I, I, I respond so to that. The, issues. the issue on unemployment is there. But I would actually say that the numbers they are running with. And 41% I would agree with you. That I do not agree with that point. number because, Trevor, how do you define an unemployed person? We have got a scientific 
definition of that. Somebody who's been looking for work actively in the last 90 days. Maliba, you've if been you have not, the National Youth Council. This I is know. I'm taking you there. You I'm taking you there. I'm actually a, there big, I'm actually a big champion <laughs> on that particular issue. But I'm actually saying that in the context of what we are discussing, we are discussing that poll. And I'm looking at that particular poll. And I'm looking at the data at the Ministry of Labor, which actually carries continuous mm -hmm. data collection. And they are at variance. That's what I'm actually saying that a two or three days poll could be indicative, but I cannot use that as the gospel truth on the situation and therefore run with it on that end. So you don't think we already with unemployment. And this, the, is, this is it. The better plan. Is that, that, is there that, a is not, that is not a right question. Do you know why it's not a right question? <laughs> You and I know that we have got an, uh, the problem of unemployment. Good. That's the only But want. then you actually want to use that poll to actually say that this is a fin of this particular degree. I am disputing that data because that framework <coughs> and that way of doing it is not the best of tools to actually then gauge our employment situation. Okay. So how would it you could be worse. from your perspective? How would I, you I would go to the labor and look at KNBS and balance out with that. Others, this for 1% is actually witchcraft. Because <laughs> there is a definition to who is unemployed. You know, people run around with abracadabra and run around that and just say that we are going to win with that. So, be that as it is, the issues they raise are issues that are common with us. Trevor, there is nothing new there. There is no discovery there. There's nothing, you will say that there's no groundbreaking on those issues that you've listed, the five of them. It's the numbers. It's the cooking of numbers around there and trying to come up with perceptions and shades for purposes of getting relevance and hogging media time. Otherwise, we are wasting a lot of time talking okay. about a people who sat around for 10, two weeks, and they are upon that, we have ignored KNBS data, which is continuous, more systematic. You, for example, do not check their monthly data, which is always there. Do we ever sit here and discuss the KNBS monthly data they, that they put out, including on those indicators? Mm. But somehow we pick <coughs> opinion polls and run with them like a scripture that has just landed, uh, been brought from heaven. <laughs> Yet KNBS is doing that every month. So what we is don't the current to employment rate under, according to KNBS? It's still bad. We are still working on it. But that number there, I will tell you that is snake oil. We cannot help snake oil merchants. <laughs> Trevor, first of all, I just want to say this, uh, that the, the, <clears throat> the people who employ the president are the people of Kenya. So if he's not listening to them and the issues they're bringing uh, <clears throat> to the front, then he is not working for Kenyans. It means he's working for a few, a, a certain lot. Trevor, I, I, I sit in the National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity Committee. And one of the things that we, we get to check and, um, and uh, consume is the data that shows us the level of employment in this country. Yeah. First of all, it is not, it's not good. Yeah, let's just be honest. We had Kazi Kwavijana in the previous administration. That was taken away from Kenyans. The current administration has said that um, the housing, uh, the affordable housing project is going to employ a certain number of Kenyans. That is not happening. But I just want to be a good <coughs> Kenyan and give the government a solution. And maybe Arnold can pass on the message. Because myself and uh, Senator Crystal Asige have come up with a startup economy bill that also includes a gig economy aspect. Because we've got to be creative in how we want to create <coughs> employment for the young people of this country. We cannot sit down and say that we have a problem and decide that we're not doing anything about it. Startup economies and gig economy are going to actually make the, enable the environment for employment to be more flexible. Because currently we have a lot of people who work from home. We have in place the, 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 the hubs across all constituencies that have actually been able to uh, allow young people to go in there and, uh, and, and, and work in terms of, uh, some of them even do judicial work yeah. and they earn up to uh, 1,000 US dollars per week. But how many Kenyans actually know about <coughs> this? How many of them know that you can do some of these things to be able to, uh, to, to create more employment? But having said that, uh, Trevor, there's also a concern that some of the recent uh, uh, mass employments that we've had in this country, like the case for KRA that is currently in court, 70% of the people were employed for only two communities. 
So what are you telling the rest of Kenyans who are in the rest of, of, of this country? That it's only two communities that are, can actually get employment. So we need to, the government needs to sit down with people who can give them actual solutions to this unemployment <coughs> issue. Because 78% of our country, if not more, is youthful. Young people have no jobs. And there are no jobs out here. So we've got to, to be creative in terms of how we are creating employment. And, 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 and lastly, Trevor, um, we, we, we did have the youth fund. We had the, the women fund, which actually gave uh, young Kenyans money that was enough for them to start up uh, new projects. But what happened? That was replaced by Hustler Fund. That starts by giving you 500 shillings. The most you can do with 500 shillings is buy a watermelon and sell and make a few shillings out of it. But that's not how you grow an economy. Mm -hmm. You cannot stop um, a fund that enabled young people to actually start up and become their own employers to reduce them to something that only gives them enough money to, to bet on sport pesa. Okay. That's not the way. But you also agree that somehow the government is doing something. It's doing, uh, they could be doing something, but my issue is, why are we reinventing the wheel? Okay. We already had solutions that were working for this country. Why kill those solutions and come up with something else just because you feel like um, you don't like what used to be done in this country? Okay. It's a continuous, the country is a, is a going concern. It's a continuous concern. When President Ruto exits the scene, there'll be another president coming in. Do you want to say that some of the things that he, he I'm yet to see, but should he bring some very um, uh, progressive uh, projects? Do you want to say that the next administration should kill that and start new ones because they don't like what he did? No. Because that's ex actually what's going on in this country right now. All right, Okango. Yes, uh, if you look at that poll that Arnold is now calling witchcraft, <laughs> it actually sh shows progressively in terms of polling how you know, the people perceive this issue of unemployment. From 34, the last time, 37%, 38%. If our Arnold would even spin this and say, by the way, we can attribute it to the COVID issues, we can attribute it to the economy that is melting down, we can attribute it, we're just coming from, you know, debt settlement, but he's telling us that that is not true. And that's why I said, if there were people who were to discredit this poll, it's us. But we are looking at it objectively. And we are saying <laughs> there are certain things that we are seeing in this poll that are actual indicators. The reason President William Ruto, when he was running, in page three of the manifesto of UDA, he actually said why he is running for president. Therein, he said that he would want to address issues of concern. One of them is unemployment. Today, we are looking at unemployment and polls show. The data that he's telling us actually also show that there is, he has admitted that they are not doing very well, they need to improve. Majority of the people that are unemployed are the young people. These young people, I want to believe, they voted for Arnold and Tim. If they have spoken through a different poll that is not government controlled, they are asking who is the sponsor. These are the people who voted for you. They have told you. You told us that if you put the Bible down, I'll move from being a border border person to an Uber person. Where is it? <laughs> you told us that if you put the Bible down, I'll move from the shed where I'm selling boga to a grocery. Where is it? These people actually love you. What they are telling you, no, no. What they are telling you, they're telling you, Arnold, we know that you have put structures. We know that you are trying, but as it is the situation now, it shows that we are not where you told us we should be. What is happening? Number two, the actual indicator of how these things are happening is the Auditor General Report, because it's the only report that will reveal if public money has been used lawfully and efficiently. Recently, you're a, a journalist, Trevor, and you know that. The Auditor General report has revealed so much, even in the counties, of wastages. The reason is because we don't do what is called zero-based budgeting. So money that would otherwise gone into employment creation, with whatever nature, is being wasted, misused, and stolen. That is the truth. We must speak the truth to power. And we must tell them we are speaking with a lot of respect. We are saying we want the government to progress. In fact, this is our government. Let me tell you, Arnold, I am more government than you because I'm the people that is not seated in a four-walled room on Ngong Road to tell the president we are well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I am speaking from outside and telling the president that we are not doing well. You are putting effort. But the people of Kenya have said, Mr. President, the effort you are putting is not, is not yet there. Please do more. This poll should encourage William Ruto to do more. I know he's watching this show, and I know he will do more. He will call Anul and Tim to a, to, for tea and tell them, we well, have listened to what Okango is saying. This is where we are going, and this is what we need to do. Okay. Arnold, you know that. Gary, we are, we are running out of time here, but yes, closing yes. remarks now. Uh -huh. What is the final message you want people to hear from this conversation that we are having here? Uh, my final... We'll come to the feedback in just a bit as well. Okay. My final message is, first of all, uh, to, to, to say that the government is very intentional about you know, making life easy for, for everyone. And um, the data is outside, out there and uh, it's really readily available. And I really thank uh, Moshimuya here because she has also acknowledged that uh, the government is doing a lot in terms of job creation through uh, the digital, digital hubs. And as we look forward uh, to the implementation of uh, the mm -hmm. MTP4, which should be ending at around um, 2028, we are looking <coughs> forward to inclusive growth of course, increasing our tax to GDP ratio and creating more opportunities out there for, for the youth out, outside there. Okay. Something I want to mention about employment, I would want to encourage the youth out, out there to <coughs> uh, also visit the government portals because there are a lot of opportunities um, in that portal. There's the Niamis portal, which um, also um, sieves out the the legitimate um, uh, agents for, for especially international jobs. So the government is very intentional about reducing the cost of hunger, um, creating employment, um, um, ending, ending hunger, and everything that is stipulated in our manifesto. And that is why we are here as, as, as the, as the uh, ruling party, to make sure that everything that was promised in the manifesto, in manifesto is fully implemented. Okay. Yep. Let's bring up some of your feedback first before we take final remarks from the rest of the panel. Let's see what the people are saying themselves at Trevor Mbidia at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. Let's bring that up on your screen right now and see your views on whether the country is heading in the wrong direction or the right direction and why you think so. Um, Danny Allen says, next time bring sober fellows. The likes of Arnold Valiba using technicalities to discredit others does not sit right. The government is the one not following court orders. Okay. Branch M1, the government's response to these challenges, such as fake fertilizer and doctor strikes, will ultimately determine its ability to meet the needs and aspirations of the Kenyan people and restore confidence in its governance, okay? John says the country is heading in the wrong direction. Unga prices have uh, always stabilized post-harvest, so this guy shouldn't talk about that. My salary has been slashed. That's reducing my disposable <laughs> income and my ability to do more. Kenya Kwanzaa guys live in utopia. I wonder whether Arnold agrees that the <laughs> pay slip has reduced. Honorable Lillian Sioy, I implore our great doctors to take the deal that the government is offering because they are, our current economic situation as a country can sustain just that. When we will be stable economically, the government will as well give a better deal. Okay? Ole Shonko says, if you get a new girlfriend today, and at the beginning, the sailing becomes a little difficult. Mm. Do you keep blaming the previous partner you know? that he left a dilapidated <laughs> girlfriend? We are almost done with the second year. The apples and oranges. The apples and oranges. Ian says, all those millions Ruto is using to fly in oh, and out good. of the country for his meetings, he should pay doctors. He should just use Zoom instead of splashing millions on travel. Okay. Godi Baraza says, as the healthcare crisis deepens, it's also an opportunity for the ugly underbelly of the health CS to be exposed. The casual manner in which she's dealing with the doctor's strike tells a lot about her suitability to serve in that docket. All right. Kelvin says, the country doesn't have to plunge into recurrent healthcare sector strikes. The government has to ensure that that never happens by adequately funding the healthcare systems and addressing <coughs> human resource welfare. Gabi says, to end the health crisis and fulfill broken promises, we must avoid quick fixes and commit to long-term reforms that transform our health sector into one that values the dignity of the medical profession and well-being of Kenyans. 
What Jenny says, Kenya in wrong trajectory as people people are dying, farming <coughs> is killed through fake fertilizer, Kenyans are overtaxed, but no tangible projects can be counted upon except another Fuliza in the name of Hustler Fund. <laughs> All right. Ole Shonko again says, ask the panelists this question. In the event the doctors never come down, so what happens? Fire them. Gumbi, uh, Maniba says fire them. No change is seen in our hospitals since the last strike. The government needs to be reminded of their promises. Kaka Edu says if both government and doctors are chest thumping, who will hear out the cry by suffering Kenyans? Each side <coughs> should put aside their ego and end this strike. Maliba, closing remarks. It's unfair that a few things were spoken to me and then uh, I have to do my closing remarks without responding to You them. can respond and close. Uh, first <laughs> Don't of all, always lament, <laughs> and you have the floor. <laughs> first of all, I just needed to make it uh, clear. First of all, I'm actually happy that uh, Mwishmiwa Mayaka is here and she's spoken about the startup bill. Uh, we at the party and as an individual, I'm a consumer of the products that come out of parliament a lot of times. And uh, one of the problems we have, uh, I think as a country, is that uh, the weakest link in our governance still remains parliament. Uh, we also, I come from Kenya, and we have got most of MPs in Parliament. So when I talk, I talk about Parliament, I'm not targeting any other side. I'm actually taking that, you know, speaking to the level of legislation that comes to Parliament. I've looked at uh, the startup bill. It's well intentioned, but then the, you realize that it's speaking <coughs> of existing problems, or rather existing functions in other spaces. That then ensures that uh, there's this desire to have a name on a bill, but then you have got existing platforms, structures, policies, and even legislation that can actually take care of some of these things. It's just a matter of updating some of them. I'll be sharing my, uh, uh, what we did on the same. Uh, he knows that. And when I speak to that, Irene, I'm actually speaking to some of these things. There are some mundane bills in parliament. For example, there is one called the Mang Bill, uh, the Mang Beans Bill. Mang is uh, the technical Dengu. name for Dengu. So th there is a Dengu Bill. And after going through it, I realized that even the people who do Njahe will also come up with the, the Njahe bill, and then somebody else will come up with. So some of those things should actually be delegated legislation, guidelines that can actually be handled at a programmatic level. But you see that legislators are bringing that up. I think the level of legislation sometimes, I look at the bills when they come out, and we take a lot of time to do that so that we give our feedback to it. Okay. The same speaks to the agricultural extension, and you realize that some of those bills I'm actually mentioning have been done by our own <coughs> members. Agriculture extension bill. If you're going to work out that bill, you're going to fight with the senator. No, not the senators. The senators will actually be the first people to beat up that bill because it's actually encroaching on the space of devolution. So the level of decision making. And there's this problem with people coming up with bills and creating new boards and new parastatals. In, even in that Mang bill, you see somebody setting up the Ndengu board. Mm -hmm. Somebody will also be coming up with a mushroom board. As in these things, some of these things should be delegated legislation okay. as guidelines, closing, closing remarks. stuff that sit down there. My closing remark for the day would be this, that, uh, and I don't think I should be giving the closing remarks. I should just respond to these issues and then give my closing remarks later on. You, but it's you okay. time to respond. <laughs> okay, my, uh, <laughs> let me just proceed and say that, number one, uh, Mwishmiwa said that uh, Hustler Fund came to replace Youth Fund. That is a lie. Youth Fund exists. We even have got uh, ways of fund. So that is not factual. And <coughs> when we talk about the manifesto, he spoke about as in, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa's uh, manifesto, page three. On page three, by the way, we are talking about the preamble. I don't know which version of the manifesto he read. So sometimes when we come in here, and the reason why I'm actually not going to take a lot of time and respond to Okango, is that whatever he has said here, I've already read it on social media. I've seen it on Oguda's handline. So when he comes here and regurgitates whatever has been done elsewhere, <coughs> it feels like it's a script that is on social media. When we come in here, we should give at least some newer ideas, ideas that have not been out there. But if we are picking what is already on social media and coming to repeat it here, then even if I respond to it, then probably I should just respond to Oguda on the other side on, on social media instead okay. of actually responding to it here. My closing remarks. Doctors, kindly, I want to ask you, in the name of God, please go back to the negotiation, listen to what government is saying. Yeah. Uh, Trevor, don't worry about the 24-hour ultimatum and everything else. If the doctor just <coughs> tried, they have not tried until this hour. If they just lifted a phone this hour, government will be willing to talk. Okay. There is no one who is actually making it so difficult. All right. Two, on the <coughs> issues of health, of course, uh, there are a number of things that we must also accept. <coughs> yeah. That uh, the leadership 
around the health issue has not been so good. And it's important to also uh, ensure that uh, we do not address these issues in funerals and other places. Okay. Uh, issues around fertilizer, we've not spoken about it, but it's important that we actually uh, speak to that. That uh, the CS was neither prepared when he went to parliament and when he showed up here yesterday, okay. and that it should actually Don't have been done better. That's your closing remark. Kango, closing remarks very fast. My closing remarks are, yeah. what you are saying is not witchcraft. It is the fact. If yeah. you listen, a simple poll, which is not coordinated, moderated by anyone from the public feedback, you have seen what they are saying. They are saying we are not headed in the right direction, we can do better. Austerity measures that the president is talking about. If the president is keen about austerity measures, then the president must first of all implement some of the recommendations that were given by the committee on travel, yeah. on uh, subsidiary, <laughs> on, uh, uh, on per diems, and also on these issues of budgeting. Yes. Which committee? Num number three, Mr. President, we don't hate you. We like you and we love you. What we are saying, particularly from the opposition, and you know this, we are advancing the voices of the people. The voices of the people are saying you can do better. Okay. The voices of the people are saying Listen to the people. Don't listen to Arnold alone. Okay. Listen to the people also, because the people who voted for you are suffering. Mamamboga, Boda Boda, Mkokoteni, they are crying, Mr. President. Okay. Listen to them. Mayaka. Uh, closing remarks. First of all, uh, 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 Trevor, I just want to say to Arnold that uh, some of us actually take our legislative work very seriously. Before we come up with some of these bills, we do increased uh, level of research and study. And he's invited to give his remarks on the startup bill because it's now going to come for uh, for, 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 for public participation. Okay. On the issue of the Youth and Women Fund, I just want to educate Arnold because he might not know that when these particular funds were digitalized, what happened is the people who had uh, increased uh, limits, who had gone up to even 800,000 shillings, were zero rated. So it's actually not, uh, not really doing the same thing that it used to do. And finally, I just want to say in terms of the polls, and the feedback from Kenyans. That's to tell the Kenya Kwanzaa government that the government, the Kenyan Republic is not a public, it's the, the government is not a private entity. You're a public entity. You've got to listen to the voice of the people. And if Kenyans are telling you you're doing, what you're doing is wrong, please listen to them and take the feedback uh, positively. All right. Thank you so much for making time this morning. Honorable Irene Mayaka, nominated member of parliament, Frederick Okango, Secretary Political Affairs, Azimio, and Maliba Arnold Nyajai, Strategic Communication Advisor, UDA. And Anthony Ngeru, Head of Communications Research and the UDA as well. Thank you so much for making time this morning. We're heading out for a quick break. When you come back, it's time for Level Up Friday. I see DJ Carbon is on the decks. William Tuva will be here and also Butros. Yeah, it's time to shake a leg. Bye for now. Have a fantastic weekend ahead. My name is Trevor Ombija.